So far, we've introduced the data definition for a couple of points and designed the function draw couple of points. Already, this is enough for a Big Bang animation that is not really animated. We're going to use for a world a couple of points. So to make a Big Bang, we have to give an initial world, which is an initial couple of points. We could use CP3, which is a data example that we made earlier. Now, all we have to give and all we have to give is a function for drawing a couple of points. And we have that. It's called draw couple of points. We don't really need to worry here about how the function works. All we have to worry about is that the function has the right signature. It takes a world and returns an image, and it has the right purpose. It draws the given world as an image. OK, this is actually enough for a Big Bang. The Big Bang doesn't do much. It doesn't change, but it does draw the initial world and keeps it going. Now, uh, I do need to require the universe library so that I get the Big Bang. That's it. This is a Big Bang. It has the initial world staying as the current world, and it draws it using the function draw a couple points that we just designed. Let's make things more interesting. Let's make the points move up as time passes by. So for that, we need to write a new function. We need to design a function that does not return an image. In fact, the only function when you make a Big Bang animation that returns an image is the draw function. All the other functions don't return images, but rather return worlds. In other words, a couple of points here. So we're going to use uh, the name move couple of points up. And it's going to take a couple of points. So that's the world as input, and it's not going to return an image. Watch out, the signature tells us a lot here. It tells us that we're going to return a couple points, not an image. And it's going to, let's say, move every point because the couple of points might contain no point or one point or even two points. It's going to move every point up by one. In other words, if you remember the coordinate system where x goes from left to right but y goes from top to bottom, we're going to be subtracting 1 from every y coordinate so the point's going to go up. Okay, and the header of this function is just going to be given the name cp to the input, which is a couple of points. Okay, let's write some examples. And for writing examples for this new function, the data examples that we wrote before are going to be quite helpful. We need to write at least three examples again because we need to write an example at least for every kind of input. And we have three kinds of inputs. So CP0 is a good example. In fact, it's the only example of the first kind of input. If we don't have any point to start with, we should also not have any point at the end. So that's just, there's no point, so there's no point to move up. That's one example. Let's move on to the second kind of couple of points, which is illustrated by CP1. Suppose this is the initial couple of points. To move up, we have to change 100 to 99. So I'm going to copy this and in the expected output, have something that's got y reduced by 1. That's our second example. Let's write a third example for the final kind of input. So CP2 is a fine example of that kind, the kind made using make2. So what should that produce when passed to move a couple points up? Well, we should have every point, and there are two of them, move up by 1. So 80 becomes 79, and 100 becomes 99. Okay, so this is a good group of examples because this group of examples includes at least one, in 
track only one for every kind of input. The input is couple of points. There's three kinds of couple of points, so we need at least three examples. Now we need to move on to step four of the design recipe, which is a template. Again, we already have the template. We use the same template from before to write draw couple of points, and now we're going to use the same template to write move couple of points up. So I'm going to rename process couple of points to move couple of points up. We're done with the template. This is the template. Let's move on to defining the function. The non case is easy because our example tells us exactly what to do. The one case gets a little trickier. Um, it looks like from the example, we need to use make one. So I'm going to copy that into the definition. And then we have this point. How are we going to make this point? It's not exactly the same as one first of CP because one first of the CP is make point 5100. So how can we take the make point 5100 and turn it into make point 5099? That seems like a good thing for a helper function to do. And the template again suggests that we write such a helper function. Maybe we could write a helper function called move point up. It would be great to have such a helper function. What do we want this helper function to be like? Well, it should be a point to point function. It should move the given point up by one. And for example, if we give it the one first CP of CP1, in other words, if we give it make point 5100, it should give us back make point 5099. That will be an amazingly useful function to have right now. So let's just assume that we have it and move on. We're then done with the one case in the definition of move couple points up. Again, here it's useful to keep track of which step of a design recipe you're at for each function. Because we're kind of doing two functions at once. The outer function, the main function that we're working on is move couple points up. And for that function, we're in the middle of step five, writing the actual definition. But the function we're wishing for, move point up, is one where we're a little bit behind in the design recipe. We're only working on step three examples. Okay, but let's move on to the two case for move couple points up. Uh, according to the example, we should use make two. So I'm just going to copy that. And now here is where it really shines to have that helper function. We're going to have two points in the result. And both points can be made by using the helper function that we're already wishing for. So we don't need to wish for anything else. It's just one wish. We're just wishing for move point up. But we have additional examples now for this move point up function. Because if you look at CP2, it doesn't just have 5100, it also has 3080. We also turn 3080 into 3079. So if we have 3080 passing it to this uh, function move point up that we are in the middle of writing examples for, we should get 3079. And if we do, then we are done with move couple points. So we're done designing move couple points, except we better test it. But in order to test it, we also need to finish the definition for move point up. And for move point up, we are pretty, doing pretty well in terms of examples. So let's move on to the template. We can again use the template for processing a point. So that's a template. And we're going to change the template so that it has the correct function name. And then we can notice from our examples that we need to use make point. So I'm going to put make point here. Although we can simply reuse the X of the input. So for example, 50 becomes 50 and 30 becomes 30. We can't just use the same Y as the input. 100 is not the correct Y for the output. Instead, we have to subtract one from Y. So it looks like we're now done with both of these functions, move couple points up and move point up. Let's test things, but before I do, I'm going to 
uh, get rid of this big band because we don't want to be testing the big band at the same time. Ah, again, I better delete my header so that Dr. Rack is not confused about what to run. Okay, our test pass. So now we're ready to make a big band that's a little bit more interesting because it doesn't just draw a couple of points, it should also move them up. Let's do that on every tick of the clock. So 28 times per second, let's say, we're gonna use the move couple of points up function to move the points up. Now the two, it's an untick function, not two tick, untick. The untick function better have the signature world to world. And it does because a world is a couple points. So here, couple points to couple points is equivalent to world to world. If you give untick the wrong function signature, for example, if you give it like a world to image function, it's just going to give you an error. The, again, the only function that returns an image in the Big Bang is the draw function. Ta-da! The points are now moving up. 